Good day, viewers. You are welcome back to my channel. As some of you already know, my name is Israel. In today's talk, we are, I'm going to teach you a very simple method of carrying out calculations in electrolysis. Before you can actually carry out calculations in electrolysis, you have to know what electrolysis is all about. Now, let's use a simple diagram for analysis. In electrolysis, you have what is called electrolytic cell. Electrolytic cell is a cell in which electrical energy is converted into chemical energy. In an electrolytic cell, you have the anode and the cathode, which are two electrodes. Then they are connected to the battery, which are also called the DC supply. These ones are the electrodes. Why this is the anode or positive electrode, this is the cathode or negative electrode. You have the current entering it to the source. Then here you have the solutions. These are solutions of electrolyte. This electrolyte can be acidic solution, it can be it can be salt solution, it can also be alkaline solution, it can also be it's either this, this, or ACM, or H2SO4, whichever. It is, you must use only one. If you are using sodium chloride, you dissolve it in water, which is a salt solution. If you are using sodium hydroxide, you dissolve it in water. If you are using ACM or H2SO4, you dissolve it in water. All of them are able to dissociate to form their ion. It is the ions that are already interested in electrolysis. So let's have a little, uh, let me teach you a little about the basic terminology that are involved. Here you have the battery to supply the current. The solution is known as the electrolyte. An electrolyte is a solution that can be decomposed by electric current or will allow electric current or electricity to pass through it. In the electrolyte solution, you can have a strong electrolyte like his 2 so 4 and all these compounds that are here. You can have a weak electrolyte like arcanoic acid. Under arcanoic acid, this one is ethanoic acid. It doesn't undergo total dissociation. Unlike his here, that is totally dissociated. And if we equally use it to so 4 the same thing happens. So, the same thing applies to the rest. All these ones are known as strong electrolytes, these ones. But for the ethanoic acid, it is known as a very weak electrolyte. In fact, out of every 1,000 molecules that undergo electrolytic processes, it's only four that are dissociated. Why? Now, John and the remaining solution. Then you have a non-electrolyte. Non-electrolytes are, electrolyte, are solutions that cannot allow electricity to pass through them. For example, sugar solution cannot be dissociated because they consist of molecules. This one is glucose. You also have other solutions that are non-electrolytes. Then you have these two poles. These two poles are can be made up of carbon, rod, or metals. They are electrodes through which or poles through which electricity either enters or leaves the electrolyte. So the positive electrode through which electric current enters is known as the anode and ele uh, um, electron leaves. Electron is always working in opposition to electric current. By the anode is the negative electrode through which electric current leaves. Then the battery is the DC supply that supplies the current to separate the ions. So having said this, let's carry out some calculations involving electrolysis. I have some calculations already brought written here. The first one is calculate the quantity of electricity produced when it is ampere of electricity, electric current or electricity, electric current. This ampere of electric current flows for 20 minutes. To carry out this, you may not need to write any form of equation. It just goes straight. 
The formula for calculating potential availability is Q equals current times time, where Q is measured in coulombs, and Q is known as the quantity of electricity. Now, we just substitute. For the ampere, you must make sure you put it exactly. If instead of putting, uh, even though it's giving you the same answer, you put time under current, you are wrong. It must be substituted properly. In chemistry examinations, they always call it correct substitution. So you have um, 6 times 20, because current is 6, time is 20. This one will be 120 kilos. Or just put 120C. So this is the quantity of electricity that is produced when 6 ampere of electric current flows for 20 seconds. Now let's look at the second calculation. Before you carry out any cal most calculation in, in, in electronicity, you must pass through this stage. Because it's this quantity of electricity that will help us to do further calculations. That is why we started with it. Then the second calculation says, calculate the mass of copper deposited from the, from the electrolysis of copper 2 tetralosulfate 6 by the passage of 2.5 ampere of electricity flowing for 10 minutes. From copper 2 tetralosulfate this is dissociation of copper 2 tetralosulfate 6, CuSO4. Dissociation to give you Cu2 plus SO4 2 minus. This one will always remain in solution. This one migrates to the cathode, as we already know, because the cathode contains excess electrons. It goes to the cathode and pick up two electrons. So we have Cu2 plus plus two electrons to give you Cu solid. So this one is what they are expecting us to calculate. Now, the question says, calculate the mass of copper deposited for the electrolysis of copper 2 tetralysis by the passage of 2.5 ampere of electricity flowing for 10 minutes. You have quantity of electricity again, current times time. That's why we did it in the first uh, example, in the first example. Now, current is 2.5 ampere. Why? The time is 10 minutes. Time is 10 minutes. You convert 10 minutes to second becomes 10 times 60, which gives you 600 seconds. You now substitute, substitute. Becomes 2.5, you equal 2.5 times 600. Let's see what how it goes. 2.5 times 600. 2.5 times 600. Which will give us 1500 1500 coulombs. Now, having done that, go to the question again. You can see that he said calculate the mass of copper. Now, there are formula methods and there is equation method. We are going to use equation method. Equation method is able to solve more questions than the formula method, though both of them are very, very important. We are using the equation method for this calculation. So on this equation, on this equation you have Cu2 plus S, we write U plus 2 electron to give you Cu solid. Now they told us that copper has 64 as the atomic mass, 64 gram. Then this one is 2 Faraday because number of Faraday will give you one mole of electron in the dissociation process. 2 Faraday, and they told us that 1 Faraday is 96500 become 2 times 96500 coulombs. So, we now use the equation method, you say 2 times 96500 coulombs, that's from the equation, produce 64 gram of copper. Therefore, the one you calculated here, 1500 coulombs will give you S, you cross multiply. Because when you buy you have S times 2 times 96500 column, we give you 64 gram times 1500 column. Make S the subject of the formula. S will now give you 64 gram times 1500 column over 2 times 96500 column. Column will cancel column. So let's see what it will give us. We already have 1500 times 64, which is the mass of molar, uh, atomic mass of copper, gives us this. 